Hey guys, our last few lessons were about photosynthesis and conversion of energy. Now we're looking at the origins of fossil fuels, which are stores of energy from previous plants and animals that have died and use uh, photosynthesis to then store the energy and now we're using it millions of years later. So we'll be looking at the origins of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are a non-renewable energy source and are from the remains of plants and animals which died a couple million years ago. They include fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas. And this occurs when plant and animal remains are buried before complete decomposition into carbon dioxide and water. So over millions of years, heat and pressure convert, uh, convert these plants and animal remains into hydrocarbons. Fossil fuels have chemical potential energy, so that means uh, there's stored energy in the, the molecules of fossil fuels. Energy is released when it's burnt in the air, and usually this is in the form of heat. So this energy is the solar energy captured millions of years ago from the sun. So coal is the most abundant fossil fuel on the earth. Most deposits were formed in the car carboniferous and Permian periods, which is about 350 to 225 million years ago. This time there was a lot of plants, and a lot of plants means that a lot of them died and were accumulated under swamps and buried. So that means they weren't fully decomposed in the air. So biochemical decomposition is the first part of forming coal, and it requires anaerobic bacteria to decompose the, uh, the dead material into volatile compounds such as CO2 and CH4. Um, in anaerobic bacteria, that means there's no oxygen used because aerobic means oxygen is required. These, uh, these bacteria don't use oxygen. So pressure and heat from the soft spongy material, which of the, of the uh, old dead plants and animals that the bacteria just decomposed, uh, form a soft spongy material with lots of water. And we call this peat. So the carbon content from the decomposition increases the carbon content to about 55% by removing a lot of um, water and things like that. So coalification is the next section. Uh, peat is buried, compressed and heated as it moves into the, under the ground. So the oxygen content is reduced here by releasing carbon dioxide. Hydrogen content is reduced by releasing methane, CH4. And then we can increase, the, this means it increases the carbon content and we form then lignite, which is called brown coal. And this is about 67% carbon. If we keep compressing and heating it underground, then we can reduce more oxygen and more hydrogen. And therefore we'll increase the carbon content to about 85%, which is black coal. And if we keep continuing this process, we can finally reach about 93% carbon, which is anthracite coal, which is the purest form of coal because it has the highest amount of carbon. So coal impurities include sulfur and sediments like mud. When coal is burnt, these impurities can be released into the air. And Australian coal is fairly low in sulfur, which is great. Australia also has some of the world's richest deposits of brown and black coal. And remember, this was the highest amount of carbon and therefore the best type of coal. Other forms of fuel include petroleum, and it's an organic mixture of similar hydrocarbons, such as natural gas and crude oil. The raw material of feedstock in many products, are f uh, other than fuel, are from the petroleum fraction. It's important in making, making plastics, pharmaceuticals, paints, and detergents. So petroleum formation is from the remains of plants and animals that sink in swamps to be broken down by anaerobic bacteria, similar to coal. Sediment of mud and sand bury the organic layer and increase temperature and pressure form a shale. So this shale is kind of like a rocky, hard substance. So at low-ish low temperatures of about 200 degrees Celsius, low compared to, say, the core of the Earth, our molecules are then changed from liquid hydro hydrocarbon, to change into liquid hydrocarbons. So here they were, they were solid, and then because we keep heating them up and pressurizing them, they start to form liquid hydrocarbons. Oil is less dense than seawater, and it's trapped underwater by impermeable rock. 
So impermeable rocks are ones that are non-porous and therefore they can trap liquids in them without letting it seep through. Most of Australia's oil and gas is found offshore in, in the sea and it's also found with natural gas usually uh, together. Natural gas is usually used in uh, the stoves and also in uh, certain cars. And like petroleum has many, is mainly from decay of uh, animals and uh, dead plants and buried in the, in the sand. So usually it's plankton. So plankton are small parts, small plants in the sea, which die and then sink and accumulate together to form the natural gas. Deposits are trapped in layers of impervious rock so that means uh, the rock doesn't let any of the, the water or any other liquid to pass through and usually consists of alkanes of low mass such as methane and butane. Impurities in these fractions are carbon dioxide, nitrogen and hydrogen sulfide gas. Natural gas is relatively cheap compared to other uh, fossil fuels and clean because it combusts properly and there's not much uh, carbon in complete combustion. And it's also a convenient source for heating. Usually ethane, propane and butane are extracted from natural gas. And ethane is used in the petrochemical industry, while propane and butane are liquefied for liquefied petroleum gas for cars. So these cars, uh, instead of using uh, petrol, they use natural gas which has been compressed and in, under certain pressure conditions forms a liquid. So when we have methane, the combustion reaction is CH4 in the gas form. Combustion always uses up oxygen, so we need to put oxygen in there. And it produces carbon dioxide and water. So in summary, what we were looking at are different types of fossil fuels, and usually these are natural gas, uh, petroleum, and coal. So using the information, we'll just answer a few questions now. Question one. What is not required to form fossil fuels? The remains of plants and animals. Uh, yes, they are required because that's what the source of fossil fuels are. Anaerobic bacteria. Yep, they need to decompose the plants and animals in a, without the use of oxygen. Heat and pressure. We also need that to squeeze everything together, heat it up and convert everything into hydrocarbons. And oxygen. No, we don't need oxygen because it's important that the plants and animals that have died are not decomposed by aerobic bacteria, so meaning they use oxygen, uh, because those that use oxygen will not form what we need for hydrocarbons. So D is the correct answer here. Two, which statement is correct? Uh, petroleum is a solid fuel. No, petroleum is a liquid fuel. Uh, fossil fuels are quickly formed in the ground no, they take millions of years to form, so they're not quickly formed. Natural gas is denser than water. It is not denser than water. Uh, natural gas usually floats on top of the water. So coal is the most abundant fossil fuel. Yes, it is. And Australia has most of the abundant, um, most abundant deposits of coal in the, uh, in the world. Three, write the chemical equation for combustion of methane. So combustion, remember, always is the uh, reactant plus oxygen. So here we have methane, which is CH4 in a gas form. So we put a G. And then we are always, combustion is always with oxygen. So we're burning it. Oxygen is a gas at room temperature. And what we always form is carbon dioxide and water, which both of them are gaseous form. So after we write the general equation, we need to always check that it's balanced. So here we have one carbon, one carbon, so that's fine. Next we have four hydrogens and two hydrogens, so we need to times it by two. So now we have four hydrogens and four hydrogens, so that's fine. Next we have two oxygens here, two oxygens here plus one times two, which is two. So two oxygens plus two oxygens gives us four oxygens here. So what do we need to do here to make it four? We just need to times it by two. So we, lastly, you just quickly check over, make sure everything's right. One, one, four, two times two is four. 
2 times 2 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. So that's correct. So the correct answer is CH4 plus 2 moles of uh, oxygen gives us 1 mole of carbon dioxide and 2 moles of water. Okay, question four. Name three uses of petroleum. One is in the production of plastics. We also can use it in fuel for cars, as well as the manufacture of certain pharmaceuticals. And question five, describe the formation of coal. So organic matter, remember, is buried after it's died and decomposition by oxidation is minimal because it's been either underwater or buried somewhere. Anaerobic bacteria decompose it to form a soft spongy material called peat. And remember, anaerobic doesn't use oxygen. There's a release of carbon dioxide, water and methane. An increased temperature and pressure uh, increases the carbon content and reducing more carbon dioxide, water and, and methane. So it's squeezing it all together and getting rid of these impurities. This forms lignite, brown coal, and if we continue with more uh, more pressure, more temperature, we can eventually form black coal and then anthracite coal, which has the highest amount of carbon at 93%. So the formation of fossil fuels are from millions of years ago. Dead animals and dead plants have died and then sunk underground or underwater where anaerobic bacteria can then come in and decompose it. And then it can either be forming coal or petroleum or natural gas. And then we can now use that natural gas or other fuels to then uh, power our power stations or cars.